So, so this is the first of several presentations on creativity. So you're all here today, I'm assuming because you're interested in creative thinking, creative ideas. We already know how to generate boring ideas. Every single one of us has a lifetime of experience in generating same old, same old, conventional, <clears throat> tried and true, conforming, and <clears throat> otherwise boring ideas. But the intriguing thing is the, the idea that is, is different, it's clever. And our reaction to that always is, wow, that's different. Wow, that's clever. I had no idea. Or <clears throat> if it's in the form of a joke, we laugh. And so, but every joke, if you think, think of, is clever. It's a clever idea. Most of them are anyway. It's clever because it's a swerve. It's a curveball. It's a twist. It's something unexpected. You're going in one direction and all of a sudden something else comes in. And so, uh, but as we'll see, in retrospect, it's connected. Otherwise, you'd never get the joke. We all recognize creative ideas, and I want to suggest to you that we, we want to understand uh, creative ideas, but I want to suggest to you that throughout your lives, you've had a whole range of, you've had moments of absolute brilliance. When you've generated ideas, you're proud of them. They're in your own private little trophy cabinet, and you have ideas that are absolutely boring and a whole spectrum of ideas in between. But they all have one thing at least in common. Every single one of those ideas has something in common, and that is that they came from the same place. They all started off in your head. There's a clue for us there. Maybe if we look at where they came from, we can understand more about what distinguishes the creative idea from the boring idea and how we might get a handle on generating more creative ideas when we need them. We need maybe a marketing plan, we need a new product, we need a new procedure, we need a new way of doing things, we need a way of managing. Um, our businesses, we need a new type of business, we need a new model for, for uh, human resources management, we need a new incentive plan, we need something new, something different, something that hasn't been uh, done before. So let's take a look at how the mind works and how all ideas come about as a, as a clue. In order to do that, <clears throat> let's go back to the time before we had any ideas, when we were Shakespeare puts it in his Seven Ages of Man speech, we were infants mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, okay? So before that time, before we had any ideas, what did we have? We had experiences. And Shakespeare mentions three of them, mewling, puking, nurse's arms. So we all had experiences. And those experiences piled up every moment of every day. And we piled up experiences. And so psychologists and neuroscientists tell us that the brain is a self-organizing system. And it takes these experiences, <clears throat> piles them up and assimilates them and puts them together, stacks them up, uh, if you will, into what become categories. And so it's well demonstrated that infants can react to their mother's uh, uh, speech, their mother's voice, very early on they react differently to their mother's voice. Uh, infants can react to different languages very early in infancy, long before they ever can talk. Infants can, um, uh, can smile, can uh, avoid pain, can avoid pain, uh, painful stimuli, and can react to favorable or pleasurable stimuli long before they ever have any words at all or capability of, of talking. So they are accumulating ideas. So we have ideas that come from experience. <clears throat> then after we acquire the use of language, we attach a word to the idea and the idea is at a distance but we have a word and that word becomes a concept. So we have these, these three elements here, experience, um, idea and concept. And all of our creative ideas, all of our boring ideas shared those characteristics. They had some element of experience, some reference to experience. They had some, they were an idea and they could be stated as a concept. 
all of those. So right away we see there are connections between um, uh, the way uh, the ideas are formed and the boring idea and the creative idea. So let's pursue this a little bit further. So where are we at this point? We see that number one, all ideas are uh, connected somehow, at least one idea to another. So you can't, you cannot come up with an idea that is unconnected with something else. Now Edward de Bono, who's one of the authors here on the bibliography, has done a lot of work in this area and he puts this, portrays this in the image of a tree. We have a tree here. We have roots on the bottom of the tree and then we have branches and leaves coming out of the, uh, the branches and there's maybe what, 10,000, 15,000 leaves, something like that in the, in the tree. And so this leaf over here on the face of it, just at first glance, is totally unrelated to this leaf over here. Think of these as a metaphor for ideas. <clears throat> but if you look at them in retrospect, then they are connected. So if you start from the trunk, you could end up in 10 or 15,000 different places, but if you start from a leaf and go backwards, you're always going to end up in the same place. Once we have concepts, then the sources were beyond experience, were beyond experience, then we appreciate words and we get concepts. That's how we learn. Okay? But everything you learn is organized by your mind into some category with some reference point to what you have either previously learned or previously experienced. That's how you have an integrated memory, integrated whole. Okay, if it's unconnected, we have a word for that too, it's called schizophrenia. Okay, but if, if it's connected with reference to, to a whole, <coughs> then that's how ordinary human interactions take place. So, all of our experiences so far, a certain amount of them, have generated boring ideas and they were all as a result of ideas, concepts, or experiences. So that suggests to us that in order to generate creative ideas, you change something. You change your experience, you change your concept, or you change an idea. And that out of that connection will come something different. So you make uh, something something different. So look at the sources for the boring ideas. Conventional wisdom, entrenched beliefs, prior experience, it's always been done here that way. Uh, the rules, avoidance of errors, uh, logic, uh, practicality, avoidance of ambiguous uh, ambiguity, fear of mistakes, uh, organization or specialization in organization, it's not my area. Okay, we're not going to think about that, it's not my area. Uh, and also, number one, the belief that we are not creative. So I'm going to suggest to you that the basic tools of creativity are looking at those things and reversing them, throwing them away, doing away with them, getting out of those boxes. Every one of those is a box. Convention, uh, avoidance of ambiguity, pursuit of clarity, those are all straitjackets. Those are all little boxes, and or can be, when coupled with the right beliefs. So all of these books here, okay, here's Thinker Toys, Michael Michalko, um, Roger Von Eck, a whack on the side of the head. He wrote one called uh, Kick in the Seat of the Pants. Roger Von Eck uses uh, the epigrams of the Greek philosopher Heraclitus as a creative tool, as a, as a way to jump out of the box. And the, and the way the tools are applied is they create associations with something else that's different from our prior experience and different from our, from I, our ideas. So, this means questioning beliefs. This means doubting the conventional wisdom. This means breaking the rules. This means reversing priorities or values. Go with illogic uh, means experiment with the consequences of the wrong answer because after all it may be connected to another right answer. There may be a second right answer or a third right answer. What we're t talking about here ultimately is habits of mind, habits of thinking, habits of ways of seeing things. So, so here's, here's the idea, here's our problem 
and we know it's connected to something else like a belief or something uh, or an explanation or uh, conventional wisdom, what we're looking for is some other connection. We're looking for some other idea that's down here. And we're looking for an idea that maybe connected here ultimately is going to make sense for this in terms of going with illogic or uh, questioning assumptions. Why does it have to be that way? Is it always that way? What's the assumption behind that? Are those assumptions true? Is there another way to do this? What if? And then you fill out the sentence. You know, if you're a right brain and not a left brain person, then, uh, then yes, um, uh, or if you're a left brain and not a right brain person, there is a way to apply uh, a tool to open up either assumptions. The reason that, that um, you know, experience is one way, you can change your experience. If you go to the moon, you know, you'll come up with all kinds of creative ideas. You go some, that's, this is why executive retreats are, are held off someplace else, get people in a different environment. Uh, Doug Hall, uh, who uh, wrote this book, uh, has Jumpstart Your Brain and Jumpstart Your Business Brain. This is the Business Brain book. He has the Eureka Ranch in Indiana. The idea is to put them in the company of people that they have absolutely nothing in common with. Absolutely nothing in common. And so they're in this uh, interaction where they're not dealing with people that they're used to. They're not dealing with people that they're accustomed to, to dealing with. They're not hearing the viewpoints they're accustomed to hearing. And so inevitably, out of that, uh, uh, developments, uh, creative ideas are, uh, are generated. Now, if you can't do that, <clears throat> then that's where uh, concepts come in. Uh, Roger Von Eck takes as his uh, point of, of uh, takeoff these uh, pithy sayings, if you will, um, here, a wonderful harmony is created when we join together the seemingly unconnected. So he takes those ideas, plays with them. This uh, list of random word associations is what's on this coffee cup. So you take your problem and you pick a word here, uh, lobster, okay, that's on this. And so one exercise is to say, well, what are the attributes of a lobster? What are the attributes of my problem? and you look for something about a lobster that is a consequence of thinking about that that ties into something about your problem or something about your need or your need for an idea. So that in group settings, you pursue it as a play, as play, not as work. You let your mind tumble the ideas over, play with the ideas, relax and play with the ideas. And it's in that kind of a setting that your mind is going to be able to devote creative energy to this. So um, there are examples of this all around us. So okay. somebody thought of a different way to think about a handle, okay? So there's some characteristic of that kind of handle that's down here that's connected to the notion of handle that's connected to the notion of grip. And so this handle ends up being connected to this grip because it is a handle. It is connected through another concept. Now, maybe this is our problem, this is the lobster, and this is the, the solution, okay? Some, some random uh, word. So, um, the air on chair, you know? Why put solid, you know, make it mesh? Um, uh, Mail-in rebates, uh, bundling of telephone services, design of Apple computers or Bang & Olufsen uh, audio gear, you know, where you make it pleasant to look. So that's looking at the entire experience, not the product. Right. It's a computer. A computer's a box. No, 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 no. You experience more than just the box. Experience this beautiful object that, that helps you, that serves you. Two websites and two companies that develop uh, products are, this thing is developed by a company called Quirky. And you go on their website, quirky.com, 
and you'll find all kinds of interesting products. And they have a subscription crowdfunding model for these products. So the, the person who developed this went to the crowd, what the field. Hmm? This is a uh, cord keeper <clears throat> for uh, USB cords. Oh. You know, it sits on your okay. desk yeah, like this. Yeah, sure. Okay, and you put them in there and they don't sure. fall off. It's got a little bit of got weight it. to it, you know. And it just sits on the corner of your desk, okay. Uh, the other one is Gromit. So Gromit has real interesting, innovative products. All sorts of different things. Uh, they're, they're by and large consumer products. But they are, they're very, very inventive. And you see these things, you go on their website. These techniques, random word association, directed word association, um, they work both individually and in group settings. So if I was facilitating a group meeting with this, we would come up with uh, a word or I would have a series of questions that uh, would go through to, what are your assumptions here? Okay, well, just reverse that assumption. So for whatever the, the, the field was, the story is told about Duke Ellington, the, uh, the jazz composer, the, the fab, one of the greatest American composers, jazz composers, wrote thousands of songs. So one of his favorite techniques was, you take a, two measures, two measures of music here, and you put two notes in the first one, two notes in the second one, and then you throw that away and you start writing your, your music without using those four notes. You take your assumptions, you know, maybe it doesn't need that kind of handle. Maybe it's a different kind of handle for that product. Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe we don't need to do it that way. We maybe we can hands. do it exactly the opposite, huh? Maybe we don't use our hands. Yeah, maybe we don't use our hands, okay? Right. That kind of thing. Maybe, uh, you know, and so, but when you start thinking about it, what I, and what I think the real trick is with respect to those assumptions is figuring out the assumptions because most assumptions are camouflaged. Most assumptions are not, you don't even think about them. Again, we have this lifetime most of... Most assumptions are camouflaged. I'm sorry, I've got to think about that. Most mm -hmm. assumptions are camouflaged. You don't realize they're, they're an assumption. Until you start asking. What's the assumption okay. here? What have we okay. assumed? Okay, what? <clears throat> okay. Right. because the assumptions, again, are built up from experience, right. and our experience is, goes to a point where it's not questioned. We proceed on autopilot and sleepwalking, and we don't even question that. This, uh, uh, Roger Von Eck, also, uh, here, a whack on the height of this uh, side of the head. Here's a ball of wax, okay? But this is a toy, and it's a collection of, these are rare earth magnets, these little things, okay? So they're magnetized, and they stick together. And you, it's a fidget. It's something to fidget with, to play with, okay? And so you can make... Uh, different things and you play with this. So you have an idea in your head and you play with this and gradually and get your idea off, hmm. get your, your mind off your whatever is is yeah, obsessing you. Now, His desk is full of those things. Oh, yeah? I would recommend also uh, there's a toy called Rubik's Twist. You know, Rubik's Cube is the same thing, yeah. you know, yeah. fidgeting something to, to fidget. Uh, there's a book called, I didn't bring it here, called The Breakout Principle. And the Breakout Principle is that it, it takes advantage of the uh, ability of the mind to work subconsciously. So you consciously apply yourself intensely to a product and box it up, put it away. Do no, something completely like different. The, I think, and my own experience has been, that there is a power where the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts sure. in those group interactions. And when you get people together, and, and typically in these situations they go very fast. You have somebody writing down ideas, but you go right around the room like this, and somebody either says an idea or pass. And you go right around the room. And then the next time they come around, they either have an idea or they pass. You know, And the, and the uh, objective of the game, if you will, is to get as many ideas up on the board. And then you, you might get one out of a hundred. You might get one out of a thousand. You might get three or four. But think of this. You know, how long does it take to come up with a million dollar idea? 
takes just as long to come up with a million dollar idea, you know, it occurs in an instant, as it is to come up with a 10 cent idea. So, so this is the first so of several like presentations on so uh, on creativity oh, okay. and so in one of the one of the future ones I'm going to come back with specific tools and how they're how they're used